guys, I'm Christy from Blingy Thingy and All Mine Craft Store. Today I'm going to do a tutorial and just show you how I blinged out this pair of women's size 6 Chuck Taylor high top Converse tennis shoes. Um, the kind of rhinestone that I used is a resin rhinestone, which is one of the stones that I carry in my shop. It's super affordable. I also carry the glass rhinestones in my shop, which cost a little bit more, but um, they're a better quality. But I did in this tutorial just what wanted you to kind of see the looks that you can accomplish with just a resin rhinestone. So they turned out really nice. Total project time was about seven and a half hours working on a women's size six. Um, I used this yellow wax pencil rhinestone picker tool. I used my favorite glue, which is the E6000. That works great. Um, and then I also used, I started with these are 1,000 pieces in these packs. So I used mainly a five millimeter. So I used about 3,000 five millimeter on this project. On this third pack, I did have some left over, but I totally needed it because two packs would not have been enough. And then also what I used was four millimeters and three millimeters to fill in the tiny gaps and stuff and spaces on the shoes. Now. Um, this is 1,004 millimeter and 1,003 millimeter. Now I did have a lot of these left over, but they were totally necessary. Um, so I would just recommend if you're doing about the same size as what I worked on in this tutorial, I would recommend 3,005 millimeter, 1,004 millimeter, because that's how I sell them in my shop, 1,000 piece packs, and then 1,003 millimeter, and then you can just use your leftovers for other projects but then also take into consideration that if you're doing a larger size shoe you're going to need more stones than what I used and then if you're doing a smaller shoe of course you're going to need fewer stones than what I used but hopefully this will just kind of help you to be able to gauge um, the number of stones that you need for your project so with that let's get started Okay, so I'm just going to start applying my glue onto the shoe. So my daughter, she just wants, um, she doesn't want the toe blinged out. She just wants this red part here, um, an all red rhinestone. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just squeezing the glue straight out of the tube. And then I'm going to use a five millimeter resin rhinestone. For the majority of the shoe and then I'll use a four millimeter and a three millimeter to fill in any smaller gaps. So I'm kind of starting over here in the corner but you can start wherever you feel the most comfortable but this is just where I'm going to start. And I'm just using this um, really inexpensive yellow wax pencil right now to pick up my, round, my rhinestones. I sell this in my shop. It's super cheap. And um, I just feel like for the price, this is one of the best tools to pick up the rhinestones. And I'm just going, um, see where there's this black line here? I'm just following. I'm just going right on top of that right now. So I personally, I love working with a five millimeter rhinestone. I like the size of it. Um, I feel like you get your projects done a little bit quicker just because of the size. When you're working with a three millimeter or four millimeter on a larger project, it's gonna take a little bit longer. So I definitely like the five millimeter. Plus I just like the way it looks, so. That's what I'm working with on this shoe. So I decided to go with the resin because I wanted to show you guys. Um, it's a cheaper rhinestone than the glass rhinestone or um, genuine Swarovski rhinestones. But I wanted to show you that if you're, you have a bling project that you're working on that you just don't want to spend a lot of money purchasing rhinestones for it. I just want to show you what the result will be with a resin rhinestone. A lot of people just really like it and prefer it just because of the price. So this is what we have so far. I've got some lighting behind me right here, so I think that's why it's showing up a little bit more yellow, but, but see, that already looks really pretty. So 
I'm just going to cover all, all of the red, leave the toe white, leave the tongue, leave the bottom of the shoe, but everything else is going to be in the red rhinestone. So. And I know too that a lot of people they prefer a resin rhinestone when they're doing projects like for kids because kids are going to outgrow their shoes and so um, price wise it's just more affordable doing something in a resin rhinestone. All right, so I got to come back through here with my glue and like I said for this project most most of the time I'm just going to be just squeezing the glue straight out of the tube. And then because the um, the E6000 it comes out really really fast and it also has a glue string so you have to kind of make sure that you're not when you're lifting your tube or whatever you're not getting that glue string all over your item. So I like that I'm just using a red rhinestone right on top of this red canvas. So this is going to look really nice. Just lots of red. And I will leave links for everything that I'm using in my shop. So, just going to show you what I have there. So, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of go up here in this like top part. And I think what I want to do is right around this. Where the, the hole where the lace comes through, I'm just going to make a circle around each one of those. So I want to go ahead and do that now. I'll probably use a smaller size when I do that. So I also have the glue syringes that I'll leave a link for. I'm not sure if I'll be using them at all on this project. I don't actually have one out right now, but... If you like um, dispensing your glue out of a syringe, I do have those. A lot of people do prefer that, so I'll leave a link for that too. I'm going to kind of use my toothpick here to just spread that around. And that works too if you need to kind of spread your glue. Okay, now I'm going to go in with a four millimeter and go right around. I don't know if you can see or not on camera, but over to my right, I just have a paper plate and I have my five millimeter rhinestones poured out and my four millimeter rhinestones poured out and my three millimeter. So I can just kind of get to them. And before I started working on the shoe, I actually stuffed it completely full with paper towels just so, um, just to kind of firm it up. It gives me just a nice, firmer surface to work on. So I normally do that when I'm working on tennis shoes. And I also, I leave it stuffed until the glue has completely dried. And then I take the paper towels out. So when you're doing your Converse, um, there's a lot of different ways that you can do it. You could cover the entire shoe in all pearls. 
you could do ombre effect. Um, a lot of times what people do is they'll do kind of this part of the shoe in one color and then once they get up here in this section they um, do a different color. So there's all kind of different ways that you can do it. Um, you can embellish the toe of the shoe. My daughter didn't want that so for this shoe I'm not going to be doing the toe. But um, so you can just totally Use whatever colors or whatever that you want for your own personal style and what you like. So now I'm just switched back over to the 5mm. So anywhere that I put glue, I want to make sure that I go ahead and apply my rhinestone so that the glue doesn't start drying and then I have to reapply it. So, and as long as the glue is wet, then I can move the rhinestones around too. So if you mess up and you need to, you see you kind of need to shift them a little bit, you can do that while the glue is wet. sliding back a little bit so you can see it's making them look kind of yellow right now so let me just kind of move that out of the way but that's what we got so far let me bring the lighting back over here so it's actually pretty early here so just got some glue on my table so I'm trying to clean that up real quick all right so I'm just gonna keep applying the glue and applying the rhinestones So I'm thinking that I just kind of want to follow this line here for a minute. Just kind of right here on the shoe. I want it to be straight. And then I'll kind of fill in the rest of it. I feel like those outer edges, those are like really important. You won't like your line to just kind of flow like around the bottom you really want that to just kind of be straight and then up along here like on these outer edges I think it just kind of helps bring everything together if it's a little bit more in a line instead of um, not in a line okay now I'm just going to go ahead and fill in now So I also want to 
go around and do this circle. I like doing that in the four millimeter. I might have to take that rhinestone up. And it's okay if you place a rhinestone and you realize, eh, I don't really want that there. You can just go in and remove it. Most of the time I like to keep a pair of tweezers around. I don't have any over here right now, but that's always a good thing too. So I'm gonna go around. I just wanna kinda keep that same pattern. If I'm going around the circle, on one of the holes, then I kind of want to continue that for the rest of this year. I feel like that just looks better in the end. If I start with one thing, then I like to just kind of keep that going. So I'm just going to go around this circle with the four. And one of the really nice things about when what you're working on is the same color that the rhinestone is that you're putting on top of it, it really does help a lot because the red, even if you've got some spaces that you're seeing through underneath, it's the same color as the stone that you're putting on top of it. So I feel like for beginners, that's a good idea to kind of work with the same stone. It's a little bit more forgiving, like when you mess up or, you know, if you don't do things just perfect, it looks a little better. It doesn't show up. The flaws don't show up so much. See how I'm just kind of doing that circle and then just kind of following that line up the shoe. I think what I want to do though, I'm going to fill in right here and then I'm going to work a little bit more on the bottom. This little stuff up in here, it can be a little tedious, a little bit more time consuming. So I'm going to kind of work on this down here where it's a little bit, I can move a little bit faster. But I do want to go ahead, where I have that glue though, I want to go ahead and fill that in. See if I can fit a five millimeter in there. And I do kind of recommend, you know, if you're working on something and, you know, just like these shoes, I'm doing mainly a five millimeter. What you want to do though is you want to get those smaller sizes also so that you can do your fill in work. So, of course, on this shoe, I'm going to need more 5 millimeters than I am anything else. But I also want to make sure that I have the 3 millimeter and the 4 millimeter for fill-in work. So, it is just a good idea to have different sizes when you're working on projects. That way, you can fill in your spaces. And when I say spaces, I know a lot of you guys are newbies. So, when I'm saying spaces... See how right in here, I'm not going to be able to fit another five millimeter right in there, but I can take a smaller size, a four millimeter, and that's going to fit perfectly right there. So just when you get in those little and see like right here, that's the hardest thing. I'm working with a red rhinestone on red, so it's kind of hard to see. I hope you can see, but see right here. I need a four millimeter there. That five millimeter isn't going to work. So when I talk about filling in, that's what I'm talking about is those smaller spaces that you got to kind of squeeze that stone in there. So So now I'm going to go back and apply some glue now, more towards this bottom part. And just another thing 
that is like nice for me when I'm working are wet wipes. I use them all the time and then sometimes, see how this glue will kind of build up around this tube? I like having that wet wipe. I can just kind of wipe that tube off. A lot of people will like put the They'll close the E6000 glue. I don't because I feel like I'm constantly having to reach for it so I don't want to have to take that tube off every time. So sometimes though I will have to kind of wipe my tip off. So. And these little areas like what I'm working on right now, this is where those glue syringes really come in handy because that little tip will fit in those little spaces really, really good. Okay, so I'm trying to pick up a toothpick and I just can't even pick it up. It's my nails. As much as I love getting my nails done, sometimes I feel like I just can't pick anything up with them. So actually in that one little space, I'm gonna go in with a three millimeter. So if you're a newbie, when I'm saying a five millimeter, that's also because there's two different forms of um, rhinestone measurements. So if you want to know what its equivalent is to in a glass, a five millimeter would be an SS20. And then the four millimeter would be a SS16. And the three millimeter would be an SS12. So So I got these shoes off the Converse website. And their shipping was actually really, really quick too, so. And I always like getting my stuff like directly when I'm buying things like Converse or Nikes or whatever. I like just getting my stuff from directly from the shops or like a Kohl's or Famous Footwear or Macy's or something like that because I feel like a lot of times when you're getting your stuff off of eBay or Amazon, you're not always getting a genuine and authentic product. So I like just getting my stuff directly off the website. So I did get these shoes right off of the Converse website. And like I said, the shipping was cheap. They were having a sale. I honestly can't remember how much I paid for these, but I do remember that they were on sale. And this is for my oldest daughter, and she is a size 6. She has itty bitty feet. So if you're working on a larger size Converse, you of course are going to need more rhinestones than what I'm going to use on her size 6. And then if you're doing a smaller shoe than a women's size 6, then of course you're going to need less stones. And it's always so hard because I get, sometimes honestly I feel like I get 3 to 5 messages a day with um, people wanting to know how many stones or pearls they need for a project. And it's honestly, it's just really hard to give an answer because I, I don't know. You know, I know like I can kind of give you something to help you gauge how many you're going to need, but it's just impossible for me to know the exact amount of stones that are needed for every single, you know, size of shoes or whatever. So I do these tutorials and I always, you know, share like the size that I'm working on and what I use specifically for the projects and I hope that that does kind of help you to gauge better for you know the project that you're working on how many that you're gonna need but unfortunately I can't give the exact amount 
for every different size. And also when I do these tutorials too, I always try to um, give you an estimate of how much time it took to do the project. So of course, bigger shoe size is going to take longer. Whether you're working with high tops or low tops, that also is going to affect the number of stones that you need as, as well as how much time it's going to take to complete a project. And then there are some people that are just so fast at stoning. I am not one of those people that are super, super fast. I'm just going to be honest. Okay, so this is what I got so far. I don't know if you can see or not. It's so funny. That light is just really making that those stones just super I don't know if you can see or not but if you just kind of see my pattern I told you I kind of went along this line and now what I'm doing if you hold the shoe up and you look at it really what's happening is that the stone on top of it I hope you guys can see it it's not directly right above it but it's just kind of going to the right just slightly but see how it's kind of following a pattern and I really do want to try and follow that throughout the shoe I won't be able to 100% but I do feel like that makes stuff look really nice when you can semi follow some kind of pattern and everything isn't just every stone isn't just kind of randomly placed I do feel like the end result does look a little bit better So that's what I'm trying to do. That is the plan. And I'm just going to keep going straight across. And like I said, as long as the glue is wet, I can move that stone around. And another thing I wanted to say too is before you get started on your project, don't be afraid to like get your different sizes out and kind of place them on your shoe or whatever you're working on and just, you know, not glue them down, but just kind of you know try to figure out okay is this what I want to use is this gonna work what size do I kind of need to fit in there you can totally do that I did forget to mention that when you're working with E6000 glue that it's very very strong and it's best to use it in a well ventilated area like around an open window or um, a lot of people wear those little masks especially those people that really do a lot of um, rhinestone work and they're just constantly exposed to those fumes um, they just wear the mask when they're working. Just to kind of protect themselves from the fume, so. Okay, and as you can see, I've been using this little wax stick the whole time. I love it so much. It's like a buck ninety-nine in my shop, and I swear by it. I love stuff that's like very inexpensive and affordable but it gets the job done and so I have to say 
this little gadget right here. It's one of my favorite tools. I use it more than any other rhinestone picker tool. And I love it. Okay, so my husband was in there in the living room watching TV, and now you can just tell how loud it is in the background. I apologize for that. I'll go and cut it down here in a minute. So here in a minute, I'm just going to kind of, I'm going to keep working on the sheet, but I'm going to like do it in the fast forward thing. So, because nobody's going to want to sit here and watch me bling out this entire sheet. It's going to take forever. So um, but what I'm going to do is just going to continue my same pattern. And um, but this is what I've got so far here. Let me move this slide again. It's showing a lot of yellow. It's just really early here in the morning, so I don't have a lot of natural light coming through my window. So I feel like it's dark in here, but anyway, that's what I have so far. And um, I'm just going to keep doing this side of the shoe and just keep following the exact same pattern.
Okay, so I just finished this side of the shoe. Um, it looks really, really nice. I do want to just kind of show you the pattern that I followed. I used mainly a five millimeter. All this stuff that you see right through here, this is all a five millimeter. Um, what I did was the lines that I followed, I took a five millimeter all the way across this bottom row. Just went all the way until I stopped here at the back. Then again, just kind of going in with a five millimeter, going up, going straight across. And I did that all the way up. Um, the other line that I followed was here. It took a five millimeter and I just followed the natural curve of the shoe all the way across the top. Around the shoelace holes, I took a four millimeter and I went around each hole. And then I just followed that pattern. And then I filled in up here. If I could use a five millimeter, I did. If not, I switched to a three and a four. But then here, you can just kind of see, I just followed my same line here just going straight across and then I'd come all the way back over and then just follow it again all the way straight across so that way I was just constantly that was my pattern that I was following um, and as you can see I you know put them pretty close together um, that was what I followed so now once I get to the back here I'm gonna have them where they'll be straight going down or I'm gonna do my best to do them straight down when I get to the other side, the only thing different that I'm going to do, because it does have the round white Converse logo on this side, definitely going to shove some more paper towel in there to really get that to um, become a little firmer back here. But the only thing different that I will do on this side is that I will go around this circle um, in like a five millimeter and I'll do that and then I'll just follow the exact same pattern that I did on the other side for the rest of the shoe. so the shoes are completely finished one thing that I did forget to mention um, in the beginning when I was talking about the rhinestones and stuff that I used um, if you look in I'll leave this in the description box but if you look in the social media cell section of my shop 
you'll see that I also have, um, instead of selling the resin rhinestones in 1,000 piece packs, I have them in bulk bags of 5,000 pieces of rhinestones per pack. So if you're doing like a larger size shoe or um, maybe you have a couple of pairs of shoes that you need to do, you might want to check into the bulk bags. And like I said, that those are listed in the social media sell section if you want more stones per pack. So I'll leave a link for that too. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, you can also follow me on Instagram at blingy thingy. Thank you guys so much for watching.